Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on our Primaris Space Marines. Uh, this is that big monster pile of plastic that we got in the Dark Imperium box. And we're gonna break this video up into a couple of different ones in here. Uh, I'm primarily going to be working on the, uh, the first video I'm going to be working on is the Primaris, you know, the basic everyday Marines themselves. So that'll be the Intercessor squads and the Hellblaster squads. Uh, and they'll all be armored up essentially the same. And we'll follow the same recipe for the armor for all of our guys. So we'll prime them all up at the same time. We'll do the gold trim, all that other stuff. Uh, awesome, we'll do that. Then once that armor is done, we'll focus on the heraldry. That'll be the second video. And and the banner, uh, you know, of course, painting the ancient helmets white and the sergeants uh, red and the lieutenants kind of that red and white band. Then we'll work on the Inceptor squads and then we'll finish off our captain in his Gravis armor and we'll look at that, uh, that there as well. So going to be a couple videos here. Uh, hopefully you can bear with me as we get these all done up, but this is going to be a big batch paint and I'm looking forward to seeing all these guys dressed up in uh, the Ultramarines blue to help Gilliman out in his big monster new crusade. So I'm gonna get them all primed up. We're going to use either the McCrag blue, which is the colored primer uh, from GW, or you can use the ultramarine blue from Army Painter, and we'll just get these guys all sprayed up at once, and I'll be working on the trim on all of them, so it's going to be a big, huge batch paint, but hopefully we'll be able to get through the set without too much difficulty, and I'm really, really looking forward to getting these guys going. So I'll prime them up, and we'll be right back. Okay, we've got all our guys primed up and I have a big mountain of Smurfy models. And uh, now the spray didn't quite get into the, the, the little bit of the cowling around the neck there. So I just used a bit of Imperial Primer just to kind of make sure that we've got it all all primed up thoroughly. So other than that looks pretty good. Uh, we're gonna start right away. Now, usually I work from the inside out and uh, for most of the models where the, uh, you know, the bolters over the chest or what have you, uh, I'm just gonna start with the inside and that is going to be all of the kind of decorative elements of our armor. So uh, with this guy here, I'm going to use my retributor armor and I'm just gonna work my way Shake, shake, shake. And I'm just going to work my way now. Obviously, there's uh, certain things we definitely want to pick out. Uh, one of the things I debated was the the helmet inside, inside the face plate of the helmet. Kind of some of the Praetorian stuff that you've seen uh, on the Forge World stuff. But for me, I think I'm just going to go with a white, something with a little bit of punch, a little bit of contrast, and. Uh, I, I think it'll show up kind of nice. So I'm not going to do gold on the face mask as I was originally thinking. Man, this, uh, this retributor armor, this, this gold is just such a nice bright gold. And then when we use the fulgurite copper to kind of pick up the details, it looks fantastic. So I'll work on the Equile, the, the eagle-y chest piece. Uh, I'll also work on uh, just around the shoulder pads here. Now, some people, I've seen them, they'll paint with the gold first, and then they'll just fill in with McCrag blue, which is also decent. I just had the spray, so I figured I'd use it. So I'll work my way around on the outside and the inside and underneath here of all of the shoulder pads. Uh, anything else that would be gold would also be the the decorative elements here. So uh, we can see here that we've got this little uh, fetish here. So I'm just going to do that in the gold as well. Just like this. And we can see the little skull and the lock on there. This is the lock I'll come back and I'll do that with our kind of silvery tones. And then once that's all done, finally, I'll move off to the bolter or the bolt rifle, I guess. And we're going to do two elements in here in the gold. Uh, the first one will be, of course, the, uh, the quill right here. Nice and simple and easy. And then I'll do the actual shells for the bolt rifle inside the magazine here. And because I want a little bit more gold trim on these guys, uh, I'm also going to do this top piece of the knee pad. I'm going to do that in gold both inside and out. And that'll give them just a little bit more, more kind of a royal kind of decorative look to them. Okay, so we've all got all the gold trim all finished off here. The fetish is done as well. Uh, the next step is going to be, again, kind of working from the inside out, is I'm going to take a little bit of Cadian flesh tone and I'm just going to go over the face 
and any kind of exposed skin. So obviously I'm kind of working my way around on, thin this out just a shade. Uh, I'm working my way around uh, all of the models at the same time, which is nice big batch paint. So I'm just gonna get all the faces done first. Okay, next up we'll be doing his hair and we'll be doing that in Xandri Dust. It'll give him a little bit of a sun bleached look and feel. So that's going to be a pretty simple one on this guy. So I'm just going to go over his hair here with, with Xandri Dust. All right, so now that we got the face all done, uh, we can start working now. I, I pushed the face a little bit earlier because, well, one, it's on the inside and working my way out. And I'm also going to do lead belcher around his, uh, his earpiece in here, his little microphone and all that. I want to do that as a slight metallic color, which is cool. And uh, now's a good time to kind of do the lead belcher thing. So here we go. So uh, basically anything that's going to be silver, uh, we're going to do in the lead belcher. And there's going to be quite a few items on here. So let's start with some of the, the primary ones. So uh, I'm going to do the belt uh, fastening thing here in the middle. Get some paint off that brush on the palette there. So I'm going to start with that clip in there just to give it a little bit of uh, detail. Uh, next up, I'm going to go and I want to make sure, now it's super small, but these Power Armor plugins on the Primaris are kind of a neat feature. and We don't want to lose sight of those. So I'm just going to stick a little bit of paint in that plug and that plug there as well. Now, obviously, if I go over, I can just go back in with some McCraig blue and we should be good. Uh, what else are we going to do in here? So anything else on the body? No, it doesn't quite look like it. So now we can move, oh yes, of course. Uh, any of the functional bits will also do as well. So uh, you can see here the ribbing that is inside of the knee joint here. I'll do that on both sides and inside the hip here as well. A kind of flexible joint. And in addition to that, there is some cabling on the back of the armor. which I'll make sure I want to catch as well. So we'll get that. All right. Now the helmet, we'll get some. And that will be basically uh, any of the pieces that are kind of radio gear. So I'm going to do, there's a little bulb in here. And then there's just the tubing that goes to the mask. I'll make sure I get that on both sides. And then this piece here. Now, before I get to the bolter uh, or the bolt rifle, one of the things I want to do is look at the backpack. Now, I really like the betrayal of Kalth, the Mark III Marines that they had. And I do figure that a lot of the design principles, you can see the Mark IV influences in the helmet for sure. But I really like the way that they had these metallic um, kind of retro jet deals in here. These are the stabilizers for the uh, Space Marines. They've been around forever and ever and ever, but I like how they kind of did them in the silver. So I'm going to carry that actually all the way across. Let's see if I can get this on camera here, uh, just in the back here as well. So I'm going to carry that all the way through on both sides uh, under this kind of armored piece. That way I get two levels of color, not just two levels of interest. And I really, really like that actually quite a bit. Um, also, in addition to that, I'm going to do the big vent here at the top. And we can see that it comes across. Let's try and get this back in the camera here. So we can see that it comes across and we've got these little fasteners at the top. And I love the way they've kind of moved over to give a little bit more detail. The previous Space Marine armor was it was nice, uh, but it was a little always tricky to paint that kind of, it had these two ridges with a space in the middle and it wasn't uh, visually that interesting. However, your eyes totally get drawn into this, to this vent. And I also like at the very back, instead of having a skull or a vent, this guy right here, uh, I'm going to make this, now a lot of people like it as kind of that blue, but I'm trying to break up the color as much as possible. I think too many ultramarines are just big slates of color and I'm going to do that in a couple different ways but one of them is going to be getting these metallic bits in the back so I think that's gonna add a lot of visual interest when it's when it's completed uh, we will do these little vents down here at the back uh, front and back so basically anything functional will do 
with our with our lead belt here. Okay, keeping moving now. Uh, so I'll finish up all, obviously the other half in there. Um, keeping moving on to here, let's move off to the bolt rifle. Now the bolt rifle is going to have quite a few metallic components. Uh, anything other than this shrouding over the main kind of gun mechanism uh, is, is going to be this, this lead belcher. So this kind of silvery, I'll even do the clips in here. Um, we'll do the magazine down at the bottom. So anything metallic. And it's really nice to see like all the detail in here is nuts. So these look like a lot beefier kind of rifles, which is which is really neat. They do stand out from the bolters, but they have a lot of the same kind of design mechanic. This rotary drum up at the top that kind of sets the different types of ammunition, I imagine. That's kind of a cool add as well. Okay, uh, so I'll work my way around the whole bolt rifle, just leaving that cowling going to be, which is going to be black uh, a little bit later on. Uh, in addition to that, I've got the pistol. Uh, and the pistol is going to be very similar type thing where just the cowling stays uh, the same. So I'll paint everything around that cowling there. And I can just paint over it again with uh, with black. So it's actually a fairly easy paint job, especially if you mess up. Abaddon Black's got great coverage. Okay, was there anything else I needed on this guy? Uh, nope. I think we're looking pretty solid, all things being equal. All right, I'll continue on with this and we'll finish things off with the lead belcher. And of course, invariably, you forget to mention one thing. Uh, again, continuing on with the lead belcher here, I just wanted to also mention that uh, uh, even though I mentioned it earlier, uh, his headset, his communication gear up here, is also going to be in lead belcher. So you can see that he's got a little mic that sneaks around on his face here. So I'm just going to do that little bit. And then of course, any of the gear uh, kind of at the back of his head here, uh, I'll do in the lead belcher as well. So that it shows up as a metallic. All right, we're looking pretty solid now. We've got all of the metallics done, uh, even that little lock that's there on his little fetish and all that. Uh, we've got all of the piping done and looking really, really solid. So the next color we're going to do now is uh, the other next kind of major color on our model, which is Abaddon Black. And the Abaddon Black is going to be used for anything that's got kind of a cowling or protective bit of armor. So uh, if I grab a little bit more water here, black always seems to get a little thick on me here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with the cowling of the uh, bolt rifle and we'll do all of that. That's pretty thick here. It's a bit toasty in the office today. So, all right, so I'm just going to thin it out with just a little bit of water in my pot. Okay, so we'll do the bolter rifle. Uh, we'll just do the cowling on that, which looks pretty good. Perfect. And then because we did the gold previously, we just have to work around it, which is actually a little bit easier than trying to paint the gold over top. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do any of the holsters, any of the leathery type products. We've got uh, the belt back here, of course. Just do a little bit on the belt. But anything that's got this, this kind of finish, this leathery finish to it. Uh, there's also... Over here, you'll see that we've got a pouch, so we can work on the pouch here as well. And then uh, we'll also work on the bolter rifle sling strap. Okay, so we can see now we've got all the black uh, done up on all the leather pouches and padding and all that. Uh, and all the, uh, of course, the strapping as well. The cowling for the, the rifle and the pistol looks all good. And now we're going to be working on some of the lighter details. So we've got our white scar here. And with the white scar, this is going to be a pretty straight up application. We're just going to be going after the knee pad and the helmet. So we're going to be doing a bunch of thin coats. Of white. Now, white's a bit of a pain to paint, but we're just going to take our time. Bring that in the frame there. We're just going to take our time and work on the knee pad. Nice and simple. And take your time. You can always start at the middle and work your way out. And if you go over a little bit, uh, just get some McCrag blue 
and tidy it up. All right, so that'll be my first coat. Now I'm probably gonna do two coats uh, or more if we need to. And there we go, perfect. So I'll let that dry and settle down a little bit there, which looks really good. And then on the helmet, while I'm letting that knee pad dry, uh, I'm going to go down and I'm going to do a stripe, and that stripe is going to be essentially the width of the eyes. Now, um, in the GW stuff, it looks like it's just uh, going to be a blue face, but I like following the Praetorian scheme that's kind of laid out by Forge World. And I figured uh, Bobby G, Robute Gilliman there, he would uh, he would be going back to some of his older kind of ways. And I think in order to honor him, I think the, uh, the these guys would essentially be the new Praetorians. So I think they'd be coming down. So I'm going to combine kind of the more kind of contemporary style of the Primaris guys with the Praetors, the Praetors from the Forge World stuff. So a little bit of old, a little bit of new. Something borrowed, something ultramarine blue. I don't know, it's pretty bad. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to do two thin coats here. And uh, again, I'm going to do the whole face mask underneath, but the stripe for the helmet, I'm going to do about the width of the eyes. And of course, you can see I totally botched this up. So I'm just going to tidy that up with a little bit of McCraig blue as well after that second coat. All right, so I'll let this dry and then I'll do a second coat and I'll be right back. We can see now that the white is drying up nice and uh, two thin coats uh, gets me started on the white. Now basically, obviously, like obviously we're gonna wash this and then come back to it in a little bit as well, but uh, it's nice to get a nice kind of decent layer of white. Now, if you do lots of thin coats, uh, you don't get that buildup. It's not clunky or chunky or anything like that. Uh, next color we're gonna work on now is Mephiston Red. And as I shake this up here, um, we're going to be working on a couple different elements. We'll be working on the, uh, the comms panel there that he has on his side. And so that's gonna be super simple. Uh, just filling in these guys here with the, with the red. So I like a nice bright red here. And then the buttons as well. So I'll get some paint off of my brush. And I'll just skim it over top of these buttons here and there's little sliders. So there's a little data pad here. I'll just do a gentle overbrush on that and we'll let the wash pick out all the detail. Uh, next thing I want to do with the red in is going to be the uh, purity seal, which is down here on his leg. So all the purity seals I'm going to do in the same Mephiston red. There we go, nice and bright. Perfect. And then finally, the helmet here is going to be the challenging part. Now, uh, the helmet's going to be actually not, not too bad. Um, I'm only going down. So for the rest of the models, I'm going to have the white faces. Uh, and in this case here, I'm just going to do the red stripe down the crest of the helmet. And then I'm just going to carry that down to just above the main face mask there. So make sure my paint's a little thinner than normal. Just add some water to the paint. Okay. And so I'm just going to do, essentially extend down that crest. All right. Make sure it's nice and tight in terms of lines. Now, if I screw up, obviously I can just go back over it again with the white, which is no problem. And I'm also going to be working on the, um, uh, after we wash it, I'll be back to it again as well. So just getting inside the crest here. And again, always able to touch it up later if you screw up a little bit. All right, so we just got one color left and that's going to be our Screaming Skull. And then we'll wash our model. So I'll take my Screaming Skull here and I'm just going to do the Purity Seal down below here. So clean a little bit off my palette here. So I'm just gonna make sure that I get that uh, that purity seal just like this. And we'll make sure we get them all. There we go.
All right, so we'll get this all done up. And I should be good to go. Okay, looks good. So I'll just uh, put a second coat on this maybe uh, before we go. But uh, I'll let that dry and then we'll be ready to wash. I'm actually going to finish up the base as well to match the rest of my army. And it's just going to be the grassland bases that we've seen in the other tutorials. Well, pretty much all my tutorials have the grassland base. So I'll uh, let this dry and we'll be right back for the wash. All right, we're all ready to go for the wash stage. Uh, we've got all of our colors all tidied up here. A couple spots I went in with the McCrag blue just to kind of tidy up the, the trim there. And then of course the white, uh, I did a couple nice coats just to make sure it's all nice and clean. And I believe we are ready to go. So I'm going to move on to our wash. Uh, now my wash is a custom mix. It's 50% floor wax of all things, just general cheapy everywhere floor wax and 25% Agrax Earthshade, 25% Nuln Oil. And what that does is it gives us a really nice kind of high flow uh, wash, which is really, really cool. So it doesn't really pool anywhere and you can just jab it on like crazy. And um, I mean, you do get some pooling, but I like the fact that it runs off pretty well and it leaves this really nice kind of gradiated shading on our model. So I'm going to make sure that I check for any type of pooling that goes on, but I'm going to uh, douse Mr. Lieutenant Boy here in, in our wash. And anytime you see it pooling up at all, you just like you can see here in the shoulder pads actually, uh, anytime you see it pooling, you can just use your, your brush as a bit of a sponge and wick it up so that it's not pooling. All right, so I'll continue on with this. I'll get the wash all sorted out. Again, make sure you're no pooling and we'll be right back after and we'll start with the reapplication of our main colors. All right, left about 45 minutes for the wash to dry and he's looking uh, great. All the details now suddenly popped out, which is fantastic. And now we're gonna start with rebasing the colors back in. So uh, whenever we apply the paint, uh, we're gonna make sure that we leave whatever kind of shading happens on the edges and the corners where the two colors meet and all that, we're going to make sure that we actually retain that shading. So uh, to start off with, we'll go with his face and we're just going to do essentially anything that isn't, you know, this, this is kind of the, oh, it's called overbrushing where we go over the major kind of highlights and it's kind of like a dry brush only with kind of wetter paint. So I'm going to start with this Gideon flesh tone here and I'm going to pick out just a nice kind of gentle working over here. And I'm going to just do all the major highlights of the, of the head here. And once that's done, we're going to go in here now and with Kislev Flesh, we're just going to pick out the extreme highlights of the skin tone. So uh, in this case here, we'll do the nose, we'll do the brow of the eyes, the, 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 the little bit of highlight on the forehead there. Get some extra paint off of here. And then I'll just lightly skim over just kind of the extreme highlights of the, the head. So a little bit of the cheekbones. So essentially what we did before, only picking out just some of the finer, finer highlights. Okay, with the face done now, we're going to move on to the hair. So we'll do a little bit of Zandri dust and we'll just do like a just like, again, like a sun bleached highlighted type look. And so we're just going to do streaks and we'll start from the front where it's a little more ragged and we'll just kind of streak backwards. And so it's the only way that we can really get any kind of texture. It's not 3D, so we just have to kind of infer that, that 3D. All right, and then we'll top off the highlight on the hair with Screaming Skull, and we'll do the the Purity Seal as well. So with the Screaming Skull on the hair, I'm just going to just, again, just do little bits of streaks, but just not as deep as I did with the Xandri Dust. Just picking out kind of what would be the extreme highlights. And then, I'll also go in and do the purity seals as well. So I'm just going to do, just picking out the majors. So with the purity seals, it's a little different. You want to leave some of that color in there. See that some of that shading in there, but you want to also just pick out the major highlights and we'll let the text 
kind of sink in a bit, but it just gives it a little bit of visual depth to leave that shading in there. Okay, with the face and the hair all done, which has come out nice, it looks a little worn and weathered, kind of sun bleached, you know, weather beaten skin, all that. Uh, we're now gonna start focusing on the blue and we're going to use Alt Dwarf Guard Blue and that is going to uh, give us our major highlight on all of our armor. So what I'm going to do now is just, uh, again, trying to leave as much of that shading as humanly possible. I'm going to go now and just kind of do the major highlights. Now, the color is similar enough that you can just actually kind of hit it right in the middle a little bit and leave all that awesome shading left over just on the outside. So again, just picking out all the major highlights, uh, leaving as much of that as much of that uh, gold, apparently, as I tap into the gold, leaving as much of that kind of shaded area as you can whenever it starts to, to blend away and kind of meet another color. All right, so just gonna work my way through. Uh, on the shoulder pads, uh, I'm just going to streak it down. Being super careful here, obviously, I wanna keep all that awesome shading in there. So I'm just gonna streak this down until I'm kind of happy with the, where it where it lays. So this is a little bit thin. I just had a little bit of water left on my brush. And we're also going to come in with a highlight later. But you want to kind of let that just, just color it up, like just bring up a little bit of pop there. And again, just picking out all the major highlights. Now the new Primaris uh, Marines are so good I love the way they have the, the hips and everything like that. You can see it's all raised up. So if you do want to do any kind of edge highlighting, it's a lot easier to play with. And I did this in the review. I talked about this in the review. It's a lot easier to just kind of highlight and shade with washes than, say, the Marines before, because they had lots of this indentation previously. But uh, now it's mostly just kind of raised areas with just a little bit of indentation there. All right, starting to work my way around the model. Uh, again, just picking out all the majors. If I say that 10 more times, I'm sure everyone will get the point. And we're off. With the Altdorf blue, uh, just kind of, you know, overbrushed over top of our other shaded blue, you can see we get this nice degradation uh, of color. So it goes from that brighter Altdorf blue down to that McCraggy blue, down to just a dark lined blue in there as well. So picking out all the major highlights gives it lots of punch and lots of depth uh, when we leave that little bit of shading inside there. So really liking the way it's coming together. Uh, next up, we're going to be doing the highlight for the blue. And for that, we're going to use our Lothern blue. And uh, I'm really liking the, the, the colors. It's, it's bold and it pops, which is pretty cool. And so with the Lothern blue or Lothern blue here, I'm just gonna take a little bit on my brush, tap the surface of the water, and then uh, basically smooth it out on my palette a little bit here. And I'm just going to do an edge highlight. So right on the very edge of our armor, I'm just going to draw just these little edge highlights. Now you can do it at an angle with your brush and you just wanna kinda of go around and just touch the very edge of that armor. So talking again about the leg panels, it's it's really nice to see this, this edging that you have uh, on, on the leg panels because it's a lot easier to edge highlight uh, and wash. So it just adds a ton of character but the truth is the design is so good that it allows us to kind of get these nice edge highlights in uh, instead of trying to always, always go after and recover, you know, these little kind of sunken rounded areas, which are always a pain to highlight. So pretty sneaky deal on the part of GW and I love it. Really, really good. All right, so the edge highlighting is all done in the blue 
and obviously you can see if there's any places that you've gone you know a little bit thicker on the lines you can always go back in and tidy up with a little bit of that Altdorf guard blue now there's a few spots that are a little looking a little troublesome like inside the joint here now I'm actually gonna come back with a pen a little bit later so I can clear that up just a little bit but for now the blue is done oh one other side note uh, in the second video or the third video, one of the two, uh, I'm going to be doing something a little sep uh, special with the uh, shoulder pads. Uh, just something for uh, for Gilman's kind of own, which is my own little bit of the, the take on the chapter, kind of his own personal forces there. So uh, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, so you'll notice a lack of the edge highlighting there. But pretty much everything else looks, uh, looks pretty solid. Okay, so with that moving on, uh, we're going to go into the gold highlighting now. Like, uh, I'm, I'm just going to edge highlight here with the fulgurite copper. And the, what I like about the fulgurite copper is you've seen a lot of people um, highlighting their gold with the silver, with the runefang steels and all of that. What I like about the fulgurite copper is it's got like a nice blend. It's got a little bit of the yellow, but once it's kind of dried, it's got little hints of silver in it as well. So uh, just kind of two birding it there. So I'm just going to highlight the edges here uh, with the fulgurite copper. And anything that was gold, uh, I'm going to now do just a quick edge highlight. And it doesn't have to be amazing. Uh, it just needs to pick out the major highlights of the armor. Uh, for the Aquila on the chest, I'm just going to drag my brush along sideways here just to give it a little bit of, a little bit of pop. Okay, so I'll continue on with this, and I will be right back. All right, gold is looking nice and solid with that bright highlight now. I uh, really, really, really liking the way it picks up the light, uh, and very similar to what we see in the book. So just getting that nice sheen on the gold is cool. Uh, you know, other armies, of course, you want kind of a dirty, kind of weathered gold, but for the ultras, and they're kind of a newer armor. Um, you know, they would have brand new armor, so, uh, you know, it's nice to see that little bit of sheen on there instead of that centuries-old kind of battle-worn plate, so. Uh, next up is going to be our Runefang Steel, and we're going to use that to highlight, uh, just very simply, we're going to do an edge highlight over all of our, um, all of our lead belts here, so pretty much any, any of our, you know, different elements that are in here that were done in lead belts here. so anything that's going to be kind of silver, uh, we're just going to do a little bit of an edge highlight and we'll pick out all the little bolts and bobs and uh, any of the kind of vertical pieces and yeah so we'll just keep trucking along with this and we're just adding that little bit of a glint of light to our metallic pieces in here silver's looking awesome uh, now that we've got all these edge bits in here uh, looking really really solid uh, next up is going to be anything that is black so any of our uh, fabric-y pouches things like that our leathery uh, strap for the bolt rifle and the cowling on these guys here as well uh, we're going to highlight that in eschen gray yeah they're looking really good like the metallics really make it pop which is great the blue is nice and rich and now we're just going to give a little bit of depth to that very difficult color black so I'm just going to just again just run my brush right over the edge super thin and if I screw up, obviously, I can always crack out the black again. But the Eschen Gray is nice. It's actually a pretty darn close match uh, to the black. So, yeah, looking really good. And I'll just work my way around through all the fabric. Um, now, for the holster, if, um, if there's not a lot of detail to it in terms of three dimensions, we can always add detail to it now uh, it's very yeah you can kind of see it on the camera uh, I'm just going to do the edge highlighter on the outside okay and then I'll just do some streaky stuff just on there as well just to add a little bit of texture not not too much but just a little bit more paint on the brush here that was pretty wet there we go okay just gonna add a little bit of a streak to the holster just to give it a little bit of texture and then of course a thin line on the belt the uh, edge highlighting of course for the guns and I'll just continue along 
Okay, so with the blue and the black and the metallics all kind of done now, uh, we're just moving on to the last couple pieces, one of which is going to be the white uh, of our helmet and our knee pad. And I'm just going to go back in with a little bit of thinned out uh, white scar. Now I keep getting asked the question, do I thin out my paints? And I do, um, but it's only on kind of the edge highlights or when it's a big built up layer color like the white. So I'm just gonna go back in here now with my thin coats and however many you need till you're happy to get a decent white back is what we'll end up doing. So I'll let that sit for a sec. And then uh, of course on the helmet here, I'll just do that center line. And then the line up here as well. So I'm going to just keep going and just carefully Brighten up my my white on my helmet, and then I'll do another layer or two on the knee pads as well. Now that the white's all done, and you know, did a couple of nice light coats here for the for the white on the knee pad, and of course the helmet. Uh, the only thing left here is going to be the red. And we'll do a little bit of red for the purity seal and of course the, the helmet in here. Now, uh, purity seal, I'm just going to do like a little edge around. Actually, you know what? I might not do that with this uh, the, with the base layer here. I'm just going to do the helmet back in that color and then I'm going to come back with Wild Rider Red and I'll probably just do a ring around the purity seal. Leave that depth in there to pick up, uh, for the eye to pick up. And then I'll do the edge highlight around there with the Wild Rider Red. But for now, let's do the Mephiston Red and I'm just going to go over top of uh, that helmet and again, I wanna make sure I have as much detail as I can. Uh, the other bit of red, obviously like the purity seal here, but the other, the other bit of red is going to be that data pad. But I really like that kind of two tones of shading that we have on there right now. So I'll just do my, um, my, my edging and my little, uh, you know, just that, that there's a little edge that I'm going to do with it. And I'll do that with the Wild Rider Red. So for this one here, I'm just going to do the, uh, the helmet crest here. And I'm just going to pick out the majors leaving that nice little bit of color on the uh, on the the model itself so anywhere where the shading has uh the, the the wash has set in with a bit of shading i'll leave as much of that as i can just for that visual interest with the mephiston red all finished up now you can see that we've still got a little bit of the low lighting in there the, the from the wash which is nice uh we're just going to do a very fine edge highlight and we're going to do that with wild rider red and I'm just going to do an edge highlight uh, just over the, the, the edges here, clearly. And a little bit on our helmet here as well. Make sure I don't have too much paint. And just a little bit on the helmet as well. Perfect, so that just gives it a little bit of extra pop. Uh, on the purity seal, I'll just go around the edging here just to give it again a little bit more pop so I like that low uh, the contrast of the low dark red color uh, combined with the bright red Wild Rider red up top and then finally his data pad which might be a little tricky here let's see what we do uh, I'm just going to do kind of the top left of the pad so just that top left corner and that bottom right corner of the pad. And then I'll just do a scraping over the buttons. With the Wild Rider Red. Okay, with the painting all done, uh, one of the options I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my uh, Micron uh, 005 pen. So these are basically just art pens you can get at an art supplier. And I'm going to use it to black line anywhere that uh, two colors meet. So the pauldron is a perfect example of that. Uh, or uh, any time that you get a different little bit of texture. So uh, any of these little texture blips in here, like the, where the lines are, uh, we can definitely black line. Uh, we can see with the back plates here that we can just run a quick line through there. And it gives it a little, a little bit more uh, punch visually. It's a little more contrasty. It definitely draws your eyes uh, in. And especially when you got two colors. So on this flat surface here, you can see we've got the helmet. Uh, all I'm going to do is just kind of trace down the outside and it just makes it look a lot uh, stronger. 
so you can see it really kind of adds definition between the two the two colors so uh, anywhere the two colors meet and anywhere that there is a just a texture line or bump I'm going to black line with my micron pen with the optional black lining done, we are actually complete our first part, which is our Primaris Space Marine armor done up in the Ultramarine scheme. And I'm uh, really liking it. Uh, obviously, it's uh, it's got lots of different colors on it, uh, lots and lots of pop. Uh, the gold is nice and shiny. Looks like brand new armor just come out of the forges of Mars and really, really solid. Uh, the next video I'm going to do is going to be finishing off the Hellblaster squads. Uh, and then the Inceptors will be working on their backpacks, their legs, things like that. And we'll also be working on the Captain's Armor. The, the third video that we're going to do in the series, so part three, is going to be working on all of the iconography. So the knees, the purity seals, uh, we'll be doing that big old awesome banner. And I'm going to be doing something a little different for the pauldrons, which will give us just a little bit more punch of color. You'll notice they're actually pretty plain right now, even though if I put the ultramarine transfer on, they might be a little bit plain for me. So I'm looking for something with just a little bit more punch, and we'll do that in part three. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, obviously, if you like the video, please hit that like button. And if you are interested in more videos like this, uh, make sure you jab that subscribe button uh, and you get notification of all of our future videos. I hope it was of value and we'll catch you in the next video.